Hey everyone, welcome. This Wednesday, we are learning about something amazing and it is going to change your social media game. It's like creating a marketing team, as you can see as the title, having a marketing team in your pocket. So it is one of the newer companies on the tech scene that I fell in love with the second I used it. I thought it was absolutely genius. Uh, I know there's so many layers to its genius, which we're gonna learn about more today. With me, I have the founder of the company, Paul Ingalls, and the COO of the company, Clay McDaniel. And we are going to rift about their entrepreneurial experience, how they got to where they are at this moment, what Ripple is all about and the Ripple effects it's gonna cause in your marketing strategies. And they're gonna give you some insider scoop of things you could do today that you might not figure out as quickly if you went onto the site. However, there is so much content on the site that you can learn some really cool strategies from. So welcome guys, thanks so much for joining me. Thank yeah. you, pleasure. So happy to have you here because when I found Ripple, I was like, this is a game changer because it's taking a very simple image and creating a series of images with some music and some pop and flair to it. And when we're scrolling, as we always do now, through all of our Facebook feed and our Instagram feed and our Twitter feed, sometimes my eyes become like numb. <laughs> like I'm looking, but I'm not looking. And this helps your branding pop and get picked out of this sea of con content and text and images coming at somebody, um, which is why I fell in love with it. So uh, before we go into Ripple, can you each tell me a little bit back about your background? Because I know that you've had some interesting experiences that brought you here today. Sure. Yeah, sure. So I'll start. Um, I started Ripple um, originally as a, another company called Fanzo about five years ago. And uh, I've always been involved in social media and Fanzo is uh, an app for social media consumption and curation uh, and aggregation. So um, we originally targeted sports fans um, and uh, you know, like my dad, for example, um, everyone always knew the interesting stuff would happen on Twitter, but he had no idea how to find anything on Twitter. And uh, so we built an app that basically curated and aggregated Seahawk content or and pretty much any sports team. And uh, we ran that for a while. Um, and uh, I learned a lot about running a company, uh, about um, building it, and they won't necessarily come. Um, as a result <laughs> of that, I learned a lot about uh, marketing and how to effectively market um, a business. I learned about social media marketing specifically because we didn't have much money. So we had to get creative with how we marketed our business. And um, as a result of all that, um, you know, we, we ended up moving away from sports, but staying in social. We'd learned a lot about how the data worked underneath um, social media. Um, and, and as a result, kind of what worked. Since we are ranking kind of posts based on engagement, um, we could easily identify those things that drove more engagement. And so um, we ended up developing Ripple, which uh, originally was an app to help um, social media influencers build and monetize their audience. Um, and part of it was creating, obviously, these very creative uh, eye-catching posts to help them stand out and get more followers, get more uh, likes. Um, and but we found that it was the actual the small business users that we were trying to connect these influencers to. Um, were more more interested and they they're, they're basically said hey how much can we pay you to get rid of your logo <laughs> and uh and 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 at that point i was gosh uh five years in i was like you're gonna pay me um i'll take it and so we ended up simplifying the app down around this concept of uh eye-catching posts and um and, and that basically is where Ripple, as it exists today, was born. So there was this whole series of steps from A to B, from starting as a sports app to an app to help small businesses create uh, eye-catching posts for social media, and to where we're going next, which is um, putting a marketing team in your pocket and kind of helping you not only create eye-catching posts, but to figure out what to post. Um, uh, you know, over it's been a long six-year journey, but um, you know, uh, real excited to be 
here and, and was something that's really working for people. So um, before we before Clay gives a little bit of his background too, I don't know if you know that I've been involved with Thuzio since the beginning and um, Danzo played right in hand with Thuzio. So I wish we'd known each other all these years ago. Right. <laughs> I could have just kept feeding you the people that you needed. So, um, and, and in that sports space, I still feel like, we can talk after this. I have a feeling there's a way to resurrect Fanzo in a niche that hasn't been operated in yet that I've been dying to do. I just haven't felt like building the platform to do it. Right. Uh, but uh, so it's interesting because a lot of people on here are serial entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and they have felt these pains of like trying something and it's almost there and it's almost there. And then they just can't get to that tipping point. Yep. And so what you're demonstrating is Sometimes you have to take the lessons that you've learned and maybe let go of the original concept and morph it into a different concept. And that's okay because this is where you're really gaining a lot of success. You just did a, uh, another capital raise. You have over a million app downloads, right? Yeah. And over 30 million social media engagements distributed. It could be higher today, but that was the latest statistic I found. Uh, so you're seeing this tipping point that you just almost couldn't get to um, in your last venture. So can you give a little bit of hope and um, yeah. inspiration from that transition where you had to let go yeah. before you could actually move forward? Yeah, I mean, it was extremely challenging, um, you know, because we built this whole system. We had like 60 um servers in the cloud running doing all these calculations about you know stack ranking sports um fans and the content they were sharing and um you know with 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 the change to to ripple we basically just deleted all of that stuff and going into it i mean there all these things have momentum um you've been working on them putting blood and sweat and tears into them for years and um but at the end of the day that's it's essentially sunk cost, you know, um, you take from it, you have to take from it what, what you learned. And, and, and at some point you got to make the decision that, okay, this particular path isn't getting to where we need it to be quickly enough. So we need to do something new. And I mean, the, the pivot doesn't have to be as uh, crazy as the one that we did. Um, but we kind of got to that point because we'd pivoted so many times before that and never and each one was incrementally better incrementally better incrementally better but it's really hard to increment yourself to success um especially in the mobile space so uh we needed something that was transformational and 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 so it was yet another leap of faith that okay um we've learned a lot we know how all this stuff works and um you know let's let's go try something new let's, let's take what we've learned and understand it and try something new and um we did that kind of twice once to go to the original version of ripple and then once we built um this this very sophisticated app that did a lot of stuff to actually go and delete two-thirds of that to kind of focus in on what was really resonating um how painful so, was that um well <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly I mean, you, you spent hours and hours. I mean, I, I, I helped build stuff too. And, um, you know, we, we worked years building this technology and, and like the, the whole fans tech, like, so when I say two thirds of the app went away, one third of that was the old fans tech and we, and, and it just, you know, gone. Um, I mean, I still have the code somewhere laying around, but, um, you know, and, 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 and it, it was, it was a, Fascinating. I mean, we, we kind of me and um, the guy who I was working with at the time had had a breakfast um, and we're like, you know what, we should just delete two thirds of this and go for it. And and, uh, you know, and then we walked back and told the team um, that we we're going to do this, um, ended up having to let one of our teammates go because the business model that we we're going after, he was a key part of that. And we weren't going after that anymore. Um, that was really hard. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that they all stuck with me through all these various changes. And, you know, because you never know, right? It, it, a lot of them came on because I was doing a sports company and now I'm doing a company for small business owners. And, 
Yeah. You know, it's a huge shift. We've done it a lot um, in previous companies and enthusiasts specifically too, because it started off as a sports marketplace for mm -hmm. athletes. And now it's turned into this influencer platform, this, this, uh, curation or, or marketplace still, but in a very different way. Um, so because I know everyone's kind of interested, you just said something really important. You kept shifting and shifting and some people signed up to work at a sports marketing place or, or yeah, sports, it was considered sports marketing, right? Yeah. And now all of a sudden they're working in a whole different company. So what did you do as the visionary of the company to keep everyone engaged because that's key leadership skills right there to keep everyone believing like he's really going to take us to our promised land. We're just not sure when. Right. Right. <laughs> um, well, I think a key element was transparency all the way through the process. So we weren't making these like back room decisions, you know, with people unaware. I mean, all along we were very, open with you know how the business was doing um everyone in the company um i mean the company wasn't that big so it was fairly easy but you know the marketing was involved in decisions around development development was involved with decisions around marketing um so there there was never any real surprise as to where we are and what the options were um and uh so that, that, that i think that was a key element of it um and then another is that um you know just having a fun place to work um, and, and, and a belief in, in ourselves and our ability and that this is actually part of the journey um, of, of building a, a, a business is, is learning, taking what you learn and, and, and reacting and, and changing and, and uh, pivoting or what, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, and, and that there's no such thing really as, as um, failure. There's just unexpected, um, results <laughs> and, um, and 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 you always learn from that and and as long as the team is right there with you as you're you're learning these things um then they're in the same context they're in the same space and they know why you're you know making these decisions so you know all the reasons that you just gave that people stayed with you even through all these pivots we're all emotionally intelligent in context. So I'm such an emotional intelligence geek and I talk about it 24 seven, but you said culture, uh, creating a culture that was fun to work at, transparency, which is really hard for a lot of people. And they're coming from the corporate world. Everyone's kind of taught not to be transparent at all. Don't talk about what's going on in your life. So it's all, that's a hard mindset shift for people in and of itself and belief. So those are th three of your core things that allowed you to keep pivoting, not accepting that failure uh, was what was what was happening, but just pivoting. So a lot of entrepreneurs think if what they set out to do isn't working, they failed versus pivoting. And so that's a new language for a lot of people that I know are listening that uh if it's not working out, you're not failing. You're just learning and pivoting and shifting and growing and evolving. And that's okay. Cause that's what the process is really all about. It is a process. Um, but speaking of process, Clay is the COO of the company. And I know he's there because, and I don't know you well enough to say this, Paul, but I'm making an assumption based on creators of companies. We have big visions and sometimes we need to be reeled in. And the COO <laughs> keeps us reeled in and on task and structured in a way that we can keep scaling and not get in our own way. Would that be a correct assessment? Um, yeah, basically. He <laughs> helps me get things done <laughs> at the end of the day. I mean, there's so many details in all of this and especially when you're scaling a company up, um, I, I just can't do it all anymore. And, and Clay, uh, without Clay, we'd be toast basically. So, um, I mean, that, it, it's about the team you hire, right? And, and you hire people to help and, um, and, and, and he's helping me hire people. So, um, you know, it, it it's like meta. <laughs> um, you need it. You need to build this team. And, and I, and having a COO in place early on really does create an organizational structure that a lot of entrepreneurs can't do because it's just not their skill set. It's not what they're good at. And a lot of times we try to be good at it and we wind up stunting our growth quickly. 
and burning through cash faster than if we would just hire somebody else to do it, right? So Clay, can you give us a little bit of your background before you got to where you are at this moment? Yeah, happy to. Um, hello to everybody joining and um, thanks for the chance just to talk a little bit about the business. Um, this is actually uh, Paul and my second um, opportunity to build a business together. So we got to know each other um, almost two decades ago building a games business um, in the very sort of early stages of the online streaming, online gaming um, revolution on the internet. And um, through that experience, I think kind of learned a little bit about each other's strengths and weaknesses and, you know, worked with a bigger team of people, actually, many of whom have gone on to kind of amazing things from an entrepreneurial um, standpoint themselves. So I think even going back, you know, 15, 16 years ago, when you work with a group of people where the mindset is one that celebrates risk taking and learning and growth, um, that tends to spawn you know, downstream relationships and risk taking to build new interesting ideas and businesses later. So this is our second go round together. And we um, kind of joined up again about a year ago when Paul reached out and said, um, we've pivoted and we've taken chances, we've learned from it. And now we've hit something that's really starting to um, grow at a rate where I could use some help. And <laughs> one of the things that um, I just immediately kind of remembered about um, the experience of working with Paul previously is how good he is at um, emphasizing the point that if you don't ask for help, if you don't apply a group or a team approach to hard problems, then you're likely going to um, fail faster. Um, and so uh, that was the most appealing thing to me. Um, so we worked on that business together. I actually started um, two companies uh, in the last 10 years and built one of those up in the um, social media space. I got to know a fair amount about um, brand marketing and social media marketing by virtue of having to carry my own bag of risk and build my own um, company in that realm. And hopefully now that's, you know, kind of part of what I'm helping apply here in addition to kind of Paul's product vision um, and helping him, you know, live the tenets of the cultural standard that he's set here. Um, it's also about kind of making sure that when we make product choices, when we demonstrate customer empathy, you know, we're being mindful of the kind of larger strategic um, environment of where social media marketing is headed as well. So basically you're saying Ripple is the overnight success for both of you? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Uh, the honest truth that any entrepreneur should, should tell you, um, which I'm sure you live, you've lived as well, Jen, is that um, the only uh, path to success is one that is, you know, a hundred steps of getting your feet wet and stepping on a rock and stepping on a thorn and then, you know, working your way forward through grit. Um, right. The demonstration of, of fortitude and grit. Um, that is our experience here every day. And we would be the first to admit that, you know, we're a small business ourselves. We live the pain and the joy um, of being a small business like our hundreds of thousands of small business users do as well. And that's a really helpful aspect of trying to get the product right and trying to get our messaging right and trying to get our commitment right is that um, we're living that experience ourselves as a small business here day to day. You know their pain, and that's so powerful because a lot of large companies that I work with uh, don't understand the actual pain or uh, things that small business owners go through. So they're trying to fill those voids and solve those problems, but they can't because that empathy lacks because they have never felt that, oh, I gotta pay everybody else before I pay myself or I have $500 left this week to spend. Do I spend it on sales, marketing? Do I spend it on new product development? What, what's gonna take me the furthest? And unless you've really felt that pain, it's hard to really step in that true place of empathy that you can really create an authentic uh, solution to the problem. So the fact that you're doing it, living it at this level and saying, hey guys, we're growing along with you is so powerful. So. Share with everybody, I keep talking about Ripple, I kept posting about it leading up to this interview. Give everyone some insight what it is and what it can do to change their marketing strategy, especially through social media, within the next hour. Once they get off here, they can go sign up, they can create something very quickly, no matter how tech savvy you are or not, and have something that's making greater impressions. Sure. Yeah, so basically Ripple is an application that is going to help you um, get noticed. Basically, at the end of the day, that's what marketing is all about, is, is building awareness. Um, and we're going to help you do that through a couple ways. Um, basically, it's, first of all, it's a mobile app. 
So by necessity, it needs to be simple. Um, second of all, um, it's going to help you create video um, through simple photos and text. And video is real important on social media um, but, and all the networks, really. In, in fact, um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg was speaking in his earnings call about how he expects um, video to drive, um, you know, social media going forward and how, you know, they're doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on, on video. In fact, if you look at the Facebook app now, there's a whole section devoted just to video. And so if you want to play there and you want to play in that place, um, you know, you want, you want to be able to create those. And yet, you know, shooting a video or creating a video, um, you know, with traditional tools is really challenging. And so, so another way that we can help is allow you to create these short little um, authentic videos and share them with your following. The third way that, that Ripple can help is um, making, suggesting what to post. Um, to me, that's actually the hardest thing to do um, is, is to understand, you know, I, I know I need to keep my social media presence alive. You know, I don't want someone coming to my Facebook page and not seeing a post for three weeks and wondering if I'm still around. Um, you know, you got to keep your, your business vibrant um, across wherever your, your um, uh, customers happen to be, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or whatnot. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you got to make sure that, that you're, you're building those presences and yet you don't always want to just be promoting stuff. Um, so we help you, you know, kind of understand that it's not just about promotions. It's about who you are as a small business and, and, and that authentic feeling of um, that, that you're sharing of, of, you know, I'm in here in the struggle and, and this is what's going on in my life because um, that really connects with people. And that's what social media is all about at the end of the day. Um, and so, you know, the behind the scenes post or the in the moment post or, um, you know, the, 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 the question post, the classic, you know, inspirational quote post or whatever. We have a list of um, over 200 different ideas of things for you to post on any particular day. And every day the, we, we recommend um, three of them for you to choose from. And then we give you examples of what those might look like. So the idea is just to make it so that you can do your marketing in just a few minutes, your social marketing in just a few minutes each day. Um, or even, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes once a week and schedule it out for the whole week. Um, and so you're, you're alive to your customer base. Um, you're, you're, you're building your brand in an authentic way. Um, you're leveraging social media for what it's best at. And, um, and you're doing it in a way that you feel professional and you feel like really represents who you are. So that's really what Ripple's all about. You know, one of the things that I love that you do is on your site for people that are listening to you speak right now and they're like, oh, I have no sense of creativity whatsoever. On your site, there are so many examples that people can literally duplicate, just take their own pictures and put them in the same template, which I love. And then the top article that comes up on the site right now is about storytelling, which is what you're really teaching people how to do, which is one of the number one things that every entrepreneur should learn out of the gate is how to perfect their art of storytelling. And, and then you added in the layer, which I love, again, back to emotional intelligence, transparency. Transparency is why Facebook Lives are working so well right now. And, and not the polished version ones, the ones that are more gritty or just sitting, you know, your background's different than my background and our lighting's different, but it's real and it's authentic and it's people chit-chatting. And, and so this very staged media isn't working as well as it used to. And now this more authentic, transparent voyeurism type media really is working where people are telling stories of their lives and you really feel like you're getting to know someone. And, and Ripple's allowing you to storytell in this uh, sequence. I know I use it for the jumpstart all of our pop-up stores. So I can explain, I mean, it's kind of a complex idea for people when they don't know right away out of the gate, hey, it's the first ever pop-up store for entrepreneurs. So what does that mean? So Ripple could tell the story and show the images of the outside of the store and then the inside of the store and what's happening in the store. And it just gives us so much more ability to tell our story effectively but quickly. And um, 
within seconds. But the one thing I feel is so powerful, which I talked about in the beginning for anyone who missed it, is when I'm scrolling through Facebook and scrolling through Instagram, especially as it gets later in the day and my eyes are literally feeling numb, I, I lo I'm looking at it, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm, I'm just seeing a sea of images. And so the Ripple videos actually make it pop because you see something move. And so you're like, oh, wait, what is that? There's something being demonstrated. So um, I'm excited for what's next because I know you guys just finished a round of fundraising. And so you're building. That's usually a good sign that there's more to come. Can you give any inside scoop as to what we might be able to see? Well, yeah, I mean, the, um, the I think what we're learning as the size of the small business base that is using the application, um, as that grows, I think what we're learning is that, um, you know, the needs of this incredibly diverse um, global set of small business people um, become more apparent to us. And those needs are, um, are different. They're different based on what business type someone is building, running. Um, and they're even different, you know, in different um, regional locations, different languages around the world. So um, I think the three things that we're most focused on with um, kind of product strategy, where the Ripple applications and the service are going. Um, the first is giving people just more flexibility to tell their story, um, expanding the way that the application makes it easy and fast, simple for them to use pictures and images to um, really feel proud and professional about how they present their business. Um, the second thing we're doing is expanding the number of, of channels or locations where people can publish. Um, today, we offer the ability to do that by saving your animated videos and your designed images to your phone and then publishing elsewhere. We're going to make that process even more smooth and easy so that um, everywhere they've got a business presence online, we can enable their ability to make Ripple Creative shine there. Like um, even their website, right? We're working on um, all the places that matter most. Mm -hmm. to is online. Um, right. And third, you know, we're looking at the ways that in other parts of the world, um, new and different social networks and even new and different ways of uh, demonstrating their business proficiency and telling their story are relevant. Um, so that has to do with, you know, understanding more deeply those um, global customers and global small businesses, um, doing research with them and, um, and understanding their usage patterns. And that's um, part of becoming a more kind of global business is um, ensuring that we're valuable and, and relevant for everyone. Yeah, at the end of the day, it comes down to personalizing the experience mm -hmm. and making it as relevant as possible for an individual entrepreneur. Because, you know, the needs of a plumber are different from the needs of a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's there's obviously a level of similarity, but but also difference. And, and, and we need to recognize someone as a real estate agent and recommend things that are relevant for a real estate agent to do with their marketing. Um, and, and, and then someone who's perhaps a baker or something, uh, we would recommend different things. So the more we can learn about who these people are and, and connect them with other people who are doing similar things and are successful. I mean, the, the, the small business community is, is a big tight community um, you know, because we've all been there and gone through it together and, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, our business is part of our life. Um, so uh, the, the more we can speak to each individual and then connect them together as, as a group, the, the more powerful um, it can be. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think the, um, the, you know, in short, it's, it's all right there in the marketing team in your pocket. You mm -hmm. know, everything we're building is about creating that personalized experience that allows each and every small business owner to feel like they can take control of what is necessarily a really challenging, complex aspect of their business, which is you know engaging and communicating directly with their customers. Mm -hmm. And so everything we're we're building and we've got planned for the future is about um, doing that better. Literally in your pocket, like I'm standing in line at the grocery store and I can create my campaign. And by the way, for people who haven't got on Ripple yet, it is free. Um, you can upgrade and have additional services too to make it a little bit more robust of experience. Um, but you know, I even with Jumpstart have two different audiences. I have the entrepreneurs who are coming in the store, and then I have the brands that we're partnering with to help the entrepreneurs. Hopefully, also by the way, for for those, I'm not putting words in their mouth, but hopefully, you will see Clay and Paul in New York at one of our pop up stores in the very near future. Um, but 
you know, my friend Don Dow just mentioned on here, we have his attention. He's in real estate. So he's got two markets. He's got buyers and sellers that he's attracting. So as a small business owner to create two video decks, so to speak, for two audiences could cost a few thousand dollars where you can do the same thing in minutes for free or $9.99 a month, I think is the, the more robust up level of that. Um, so either way, for 10 bucks a month or for free, you're creating these campaigns that could li literally cost you thousands of dollars. So in my opinion, Ripple is one of the best problem solution tech platforms that exist right now as a game changer for all small business owners, which is why the second I saw you guys, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I love this. We got to tell the world about it. Every small business owner needs to know about it. So I know your time is so busy and um, and you've been so gracious and sharing so much insight. Is there anything else you want to share with uh, the audience? Anything that they should look out for? Any special place to really connect with you guys if they have questions or, you know, what's the best way to stay in touch with Ripple and watch the growth? Well, uh We'd invite um, everybody who's found this Facebook live stream uh, valuable to um, join the group. We've got a Facebook group going. It's got several thousand members, and um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a bunch of small business people who um, uh, you know want to take control of their marketing and tell their story or helping each other, um, offering tips and tricks and um, just getting the most out of how they can use social media. Um, so that's a great way to so join that Facebook group. Um, it's connected off of our uh, Facebook page. Um, and then for that matter, any of our social channels were, as you might imagine, incredibly um, open kind of listening uh, business. And so we're listening all the time through all of our different Ripple branded social media channels. Um, anybody can give us feedback at any time through the feedback at ripple.com email. Um, every single member of the team sees those every single day. So um, we are nothing if not open to um, connection and feedback from small business owners everywhere. Yeah, and that's one thing I love about you guys and having several conversations is you're open, you're accessible, and you really do have your finger on the pulse. It's not a fake persona. It's real deal. And I don't doubt that you're reading every one of those emails every day because in reading them, you're actually really learning. And in that Facebook community, it is amazing the power of people sharing their ideas of what they did for their own campaigns. And it probably has given you guys dozens of ideas to implement into your company already. So feel free to share. They really truly are paying attention and listening and um, they really are open, I think, to all ideas that can help Ripple grow and impact the small business community. So thank you guys so much for sharing and spending time with us today. And um, hopefully we'll all see you again soon. Yep. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Have a great afternoon. Bye all. Bye.